Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, we are going to talk about Redis and how we can use it in .NET Inspire. Redis is a key value memory database that mostly is used for caching and it's very popular among developers for using mostly in the API. It's very easy to use it in the .NET Inspire and in this video, I'm going to set up Redis step by step and use it in our backend API. I already prepared one solution for the .NET Inspire if you don't know how to use and set up the .NET Spire, I already created another video. You can watch it there. It's very straightforward to use for creating a project with .NET Spire. And also here we have one folder for components. I already have another video for the RabbitMQ. You can watch it here. Here for the Redis cache, we have only one class library. Keep in mind, in the .NET Spire, everything that is executable, executable means listening in a specific port or just running as a console application, we need to run it by app host. But here, for the Redis, we only add one class library. If we want to check what we have in the class library, it's .NET 8, and I'm using this library, Nougat package, Aspire Stack Exchange .redis, which is official one for using the Redis. But keep in mind that when you want to use any components in the .NET Aspire, you have to use the wrapper, the wrapper Nugget package that already Aspire team provided for you. For example, for the Redis, you need to use Aspire .stack Exchange .redis, or for the RabbitMQ aspire.rabbitmq client. I'm using the preview two, the second preview of the .NET Spire for all the packages. Just I add one class for Redis cache, all the required. Usually in the projects, you need to save something in the cache, remove it or get it from cache. And here I already provided all the methods because this code has nothing with the .NET Inspire. It's just a simple using Redis in the project that you can see in the other videos. Here I'm using a new feature for the C 12 for using the primary constructor on the classes. So I'm injecting this connection multiplexer, which is the built-in one for the stack exchange packages. I just set up the database and then for saving an item to the cache, get it and then delete it. Okay, we are going to use some of these methods in the code. We have already one class for all the interaction between our API and Redis. So now how we can set up Redis in the .NET Aspire. Entry point for the .NET Aspire is always app host. So we need to add the Redis itself to the app host and tell the app host run one Redis server for me. And then I can use that Redis in our application. Okay. As you can see in the previous video, you can check it. I already add this RabbitMQ and then just simply we can use our Redis here. Builder dot add Redis. There is two methods here, add Redis and add Redis container. The first one is when you have already one Redis server running somewhere, you can put your connection string here, or you can tell .NET Inspire, download the Redis image, Docker image, and then run it for us. Okay, so here I'm going to use the Redis container. We need to put name for it. Here I'm going to put Redis cache as a name. This one is a connection name for the .NET Aspire. Behind the scenes, it will run Docker image and then put the connection string in the Redis cache name. After we can check this connection string at the runtime. That's it. By this line, .NET Aspire will run Redis for us. So now we need to tell .NET Aspire where we are going to use this Redis. So in this example, I'm going to use it in API service. Okay, so simply just we can say with reference and then Redis done. Very simple, right? We are done with the app host. App host is responsible for running these services and 
we told Dr. Inspire, please run one Redis for us and then reference it to the API service. Already, I have this Redis library for our cache service. We added to the app host to run the Redis. Now we need to tell the API use the Redis as well. Okay. If we want to add the Redis to the API service, again, we need to go here and by adding this line, add Redis to the API service, but we need to use the same name as a connection string name for the Redis. Everything that we put here, we need to use it here as well. How it works? App host will run one Redis server for us, put the connection string in the Redis cache because we put the name as a Redis cache, and then we can use that connection string here as well because we set with reference Redis. Okay, at runtime, it will integrate all of these components together to use with each other. Here we are done. We use the Redis in the API. We need to add our cache service as well to the dependency injection. That is, I already add this extension method, add Redis cache service, and then I just add the scope, this Redis cache service that I already explained. Now we want to add our cache service to the dependency injection. So we can say builder.services at Redis cache service, which was one extension method for iService collection. I think we are done here. Okay, let me run the project and see what we have until now. You know that for the .NET uh, Spire, you need to have Docker desktop or Rancher desktop. Both of them are good. Okay. .NET Aspire dashboard is running on this port. We can just open it. It's already here. If I refresh the page, we have three projects here executable. One is API service, web frontend, and also the consumer for using RabbitMQ. If we check the containers, we can see there is two Docker image already downloaded and running by .NET Aspire. One is the messaging for RabbitMQ and then Redis cache that this is the name that we put for the, our Redis server. If you can see here, this is the container image, Redis and tag is latest one. Okay, and running on port 6379, which is a default port for the Redis server. All is good. Now we want to use this Redis in our API service. Already we have this default API weather forecast for the API template in ASP.NET. And I want to add another API for using our Redis server. We can say from services, Redis, Redis cache service, and then we can call it Redis service. So usually in the, uh, when you want to use a cache strategy in your code, always first you check if this result with the key is already cached in the Redis, we just return the result. Otherwise, we populate result and then save it to the cache. So the next time when user wants to request again, we just return it from cache. So here we can say a result away redis service dot get async it required one key so we can say redis key here put anything what we expect when we are getting one values we need to deserialize it to model because in redis cache mostly we are saving stream only so when we are trying to save something, the object, we serialize it to a string, save it to cache. When we want to retrieve it, we serialize to a model and then return to the user. If we want to check what is the result here is an array of weather forecast. We say weather forecast array, redis key, if result is not null, or better, because it's an array, we can use pattern in the C sharp is then greater than zero. And then we can return the result. 
but if there is no data in our cache we have to get the data for example from the database and then we put it to cache and return the result here we are trying to calculate something as a forecast before returning forecast we just save it to cache because for the other request we need to get it from cache without query on database uh, again. This is actually the benefits of using cache. We can say ready service dot save async ready ski what we have forecast. And then we can put some uh, expiration. It's recommended always use short time expiration for cache. So if we can say time span dot from seconds let's put 10 seconds we save this day data in the redis for 10 seconds so during these 10 seconds every request that comes to our server we just get the data from uh, redis i think we are done here let me just put one redis to this uh, api i think we are good to go let's run the project again here is the our dashboard all is running and for the api this is the the default one and for redis yeah it's working let's put some logs to see how it works is it going to read the data from redis or our database for example so if i back to the code i can put some logs console write line try to read data from redis here and we can say got data from redis star here we say okay there is no data no data found in the redis then we can read it from the database okay, let's run the project again here is the api service one point that I wanted to mention here about the Redis cache. When we put one name for the Redis container, that Netspire will add it to our connection strings because Redis has a connection string. So every service that wanted to use the Redis, it will use that connection string. If we check the environment variable here, we can see there is one connection string that Redis cache that is added by .NET Aspire at runtime. It's just localhost based on the port mapping that our .NET Aspire is. Every time that you run the project, the port inside the Docker image is 6379, but here it will map it and use different ports for mapping that one. This one is added at runtime. You can see the logs as well. Here is our API log. If we want to check calling the API forecast, okay, there is no log here, but if I put the Redis for uh, using our Redis server and call it, we can see there is some logs here. Try to read data from Redis, no data found. But if I call it again, no data because it's 10 seconds, again, yeah, got data from Redis, again, got data from service, but for 10 seconds, it will expire data. So there is no data in the Redis again, so no data found, but for the next one, we can see this got data from Redis. Yeah, very simple very straightforward for using Redis in .NET Aspire. That's it for using Redis in .NET Aspire. I already put all these codes in GitHub. You can check the codes as well. Currently, I added two components, RabbitMQ and the Redis, but uh, moving on, I want to add all of the .NET Aspire components, how uh, we can use it in our API service. So make sure you're subscribed. Thank you for your time. Bye.